We're right there in the desert. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. He, and he, gets, he, he misses the promised land. But God was trying to show us that not even the mediator of that covenant would make it in to the promised land on the basis of the works of the law. God was trying to show us that it was by the hearing of faith. And so after all of that time, then A.J. gets to read in another part of the scripture. He got stuck at an airport. We were con connecting, and I, I was supposed to meet him in Denver. He came through, I believe it was uh, Chicago, wasn't it? Because Chicago, you always get lost in. You always get delayed there. He got stuck in Chicago, so he doesn't make it to several hours later, and he's stuck at the airport, so he pulls his Bible out to read it, which is really unusual for him to have his Bible with him. Yet alone read it. <laughs> he said he does it by rem memory. You ought to let him quote a few of them. I'm going to let him quote the one scripture he doesn't know in just a minute. So he sits down, he's reading Romans chapter 1, chapter 2. And I mean, you start reading Romans 1, chapter 2, he'll start talking about everything you can imagine. Every kind of sin, every kind of iniquity. And I mean, it looks like you are disqualified, and he, he closes the Bible. He looks around like, I hope nobody's seen me do that. As he said, I thought to myself, so he gets out there when he gets to me, I believe we were in Denver when he finally gets to Denver. He said, uh, I'm loyal to He said, I'm loyal to you, boss. You know, if what you're preaching is true, I mean, if you're lying to the people, I'm still with you. <laughs> That's loyalty, ain't it? Hallelujah. He said, I got you back. But he said, have you read this Romans 1 and 2 thing? I said, yeah. He said, it really looks like what you're preaching is wrong because, I mean, you read these couple chapters, you're doomed, you're done. I said, sit right down, sit right back down here. I said, I need you to read the third chapter because 1 and 2 of Romans is leading up to chapter 3. Because he tells you the reason the law was added was so that the transgression would increase. So that sin would become exceedingly sinful. And that you would begin to realize, I really need a Savior because I can't make it based on the law. And he tells you in the third chapter that the reason he gave the law was so that he could conclude that all are under sin. That there is none righteous. No, not even one. There's the scripture he could quote. Give him a hand. And when he read that, he said, oh my God, that's the answer. It's building up to tell you, ain't nobody made it. See, and it was already having this work on him because he said, I'm doomed, I'm done, but I'm with you, boss. <laughs> but I mean, based on that, how many of you read some of that? If you don't continue to read in the context of it, you're thinking, I'm done, I'm doomed. How many people you think have been to the house of God that never got to the third chapter? They're always doomed. They're done, disqualified. God don't like me. I'm up under the judgment, the wrath of God. All I've got coming is doom and despair. But if you'll just keep on reading somewhere, you'll realize, hallelujah, that I needed a Savior. And it was at that point I realized, this is not by my might, nor is it by my power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Yes, sir. And the Holy Ghost told me, Sister Ruth, a few weeks ago, he said, tell my people I'm still saving them. He said, tell them I saved them, but I'm still saving them. Right. Tell them they got saved at an altar of prayer, but I never stopped being their Savior. I'm still saving them. I'm still saving their marriages. I'm still saving their kids. I'm still saving their finances. I'm still saving them when they get themselves in the fix. I never stopped being their Savior. He's still delivering me. I got in the promised land. But now the promised land has got in me. Oh my. Hallelujah. 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 See, you can be in Christ, in the promised land. Am I making sense? Yes. And still have, see, they're in this room. There's people that's got all kinds of problems. Problems that nobody else knows about. And you're thinking, my God, I wonder if I'm even saved. I want to tell you you're in the promised land. I want to tell you, come on, you are in the promised land. That's right. Hallelujah. And you think there's still some things that possess you, but you need to dispossess them. And say, you know what? I believed a lie. And that's not who I am. Joshua has invaded my land. And he's still conquering some stuff inside of me that I could not conquer on my own. I don't know, but see, I believe it will bring people into the promised land. And quit making them think that what changes them is their performance. The reason we preach rules and regulations is because we don't know nothing about relationship. Right. And because we don't believe that the Holy Ghost can really change people. 
That we can't really commend them to the Spirit of God because we don't really trust that God can really change us. Think about that a minute. We're not even sure God can change us. But I'm going to tell you this much. I cannot by taking thought add one inch to my stature. Whether it's spiritual or natural. Hallelujah. But I do trust the one who can work in me. And he can work in me both to will and to do. He can even change my desire. I preached a conference back some time ago and there was a pastor there from Los Angeles. And she pastored a predominantly gay church. Now that may shock you. I didn't know at the time what kind of a church she had. But she heard us preach the gospel like this. Went back and started preaching the message of the finished work of the cross in this kind of a congregation. That's how I might shock somebody. I want to be real careful about what I say. Because I believe that there are folks like that that are in Christ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there are folks in here that don't have that problem, but they got another one. Yeah. See, I've got to tell you all something. Every one of you in here, somebody said, well, that's perversion. Well, see, everybody in this room was a pervert before they became a convert. Come on. Oh yeah, you was a vert of some kind. Now you may not have had that particular bent or that particular Oh, you don't want to help me preach. So okay, we'll leave that whole the whole perversion thing alone. But you got something you've addressed since you've been born again. And what we usually make you think is, well, you're lost, you're out. Come on. But see, you're in the promised land, there's just some giants that still need to be addressed. You hearing where I'm coming from? And see, the reality of it is, is that God said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go before you and I'm going to drive it out. I'm going to do the work. Hallelujah. And this pastor started preaching the cross. She started preaching the finished work. She started preaching the grace and mercy of God. And her members came to her and said, we have lost the desire for same-sex partners. She said, should I start preaching on the evils of homosexuality? I said, what have you been preaching up till now? She said, I've been preaching what I heard you guys preach. I said, keep preaching it. It must be working. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because it's not just changing behavior, it's changing desire. And only the Holy Ghost can change your heart. Yeah. Only the Holy Ghost can change your heart. Yeah. And He did not bring you out to make you lawless. He did not bring you out to leave you in the condition you're in. He brought you out to bring you in because He's still saving you. He's still invading your land. And little by little, He told him it's not going to happen overnight. But little by little, hallelujah, I'm going to possess it from the borders of the sea to the great river Euphrates. I mean, no, He will, come on, if you let the Holy Ghost come in, He will drive out of you everything that's not like Him and it will be so effortless that you'll wake up one morning and out of you begins to flow milk and honey and you ain't doing what you're doing because you're afraid to go to hell or because you're afraid of some judgment. You're doing what you're doing because God has so changed your nature that you can't help yourself and you're so in love with Him and so in relationship to Him that out of that relationship right living begins to flow hallelujah not because you have to see the word sin means literally to miss the mark it means as if you would ball, pull back an arrow and shoot towards the bullseye they would say when the archer would shoot sin 15 degrees in other words you missed the mark by 15 degrees Found this out during conference from one of our international guests. And he said what they would do when you would miss the mark was they would not come and take the bow from you and break it. They'd just give you five more arrows. I mean, five is the number of grace. And instead of telling you, you failure, you're doomed, you're done, you're going to bust hell wide open. They'd hand you five more arrows and say, keep shooting. Hallelujah. See, you've got to keep on pressing towards the mark. Hallelujah, you've got to keep on shooting until, hallelujah, you can split an arrow every time you shoot that bow and arrow. Come on, anybody that's ever done any kind of archery, you know, if you keep on practicing after a while, man, I got a crossbow back last year, and I, I started shooting that thing, and man, I was cutting arrows in half. 